Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 4th of November 2019 and the time has just gone 10.05 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European session this morning. Um, as always, trade is in focus. Uh, and we heard from Wilbur Ross, who is the US Commerce Secretary. Uh, he, said, he said, on one hand, uh, in relation to the US-China trade, um, it's you know likely that the U.S. will start granting licenses to U.S. companies dealing with the Chinese company Huawei. That's a step in the right direction uh, for U.S.-China trade. Uh, and also in relation to um, U.S.-EU trade, uh, it, it kind of said it's, you know, it's possible or it's, or it's likely that tariffs in relation to EU vehicles won't be imposed. So that, that's kind of a step in, in the right direction on that front. So. Global trade uh, sentiment seems to be a bit, bit more positive, and hence why we're seeing uh, a decent push higher in European equity markets. It's also worth remembering, at the very back in the last week, we had by and large a good set of employment figures out of the US. The headline non-farm payrolls figure in the US came in well above expectations. The previous number was at a decent revision to the upside. There was an ever so slightly tick higher in unemployment, which is the end of the world, and wages uh, were fairly steady. So combination of a decent job support from the back end of last week plus um, positive sounds in relation to well global trade yeah US and China and US and the EU and if you can imagine if you can if you, can, if you, know, if you look at the, the trade that goes on between the US and China and the trade that goes on between the US and the EU it takes up a large portion of the world's trade so really kind of uh, as put trader, traders in a equity traders in an optimistic mood this morning uh, there's, been, there's, there's, there's been a number of uh, economic indicators out of uh, out of Europe, uh, broadly speaking, some downbeat manufacturing numbers out of the eurozone, uh, and some not so not so impressive uh, construction figures out of the UK. But the headline story uh, is very much trade focused. Uh, so what I'll, and I'll do is I take a quick look at the week ahead, uh, and then after that uh, I will then run through some of the major equity some of the major markets. Uh, and the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com. And under insights, under news analysis, uh, you, you'll find the article. So later on today, we have third quarter figures from Uber. Uh, tomorrow, we have the interest rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. On Wednesday, we have fourth quarter numbers from Qualcomm. Uh, on Wednesday, we have a raft of service PMI reports from major economies around the world. On Wednesday, uh, we also have first half figures from m and Thursday, we have the Bank of England interest rate meet, interest rate decision and also the inflation report. But keep in mind, given that what's going on with Brexit and and the fact that it's been pushed back potentially as late as January, well, into, into early 2020, and we also have a general election coming up in the UK in December, it's highly unlikely the Bank of England will, will be doing any, any kind of major moves. Uh, most likely, we'll just say that, that they're observing the political situation, uh, which is what we've been hearing for some time. On Thursday, we have first half figures from Sainsbury's, and on Thursday, we have third quarter numbers from Aston Martin. So, first things first, I'll start off with the uh, with the indices, look at a couple of currency pairs, and then finish up on some commodities. So, starting off with the FTSE 100. Uh, so, take a look here. Uh, basically, for the last month, we've seen a decent move to the upside in the uh, in the FTSE 100, and today we've hit a level last seen uh, at the very beginning of October. Um, which isn't massive, but it's nonetheless, you know, multi-week highs or, or highs in a month is still fairly significant, especially when you look at what's going on in the German market and the U.S. market. So things are, are moving uh, in, moving to the upside. There's a steady increase in positive momentum as well, so it can be more, you know, it's clear that the, but the bulls, the buyers are in control. If we do press on higher from here, we can look at retesting uh, the late September high. This is out here in around 7,440. Or potentially up to, up to this zone here, 7,470. So these are the areas, potential areas of resistance, should the um, bullish move to the upside continue. If you do see uh, a, move, a, move, a move lower, uh, we could find some support from this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see nicely that actually that's both resistance and support not too long ago. And if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. And that metric comes into play at 7,259. And then if you can drop below that, we saw like a consolidation in around the 7,200 area. So these are potential areas for um, support should the market take a move to the downside. 
take a look at what's going on over in Germany. Obviously, the car manufacturing sector is a big important component of the German economy. So the news, uh, the announcement that the US may not be looking to kind of have um, get into a tariff spat with, with, the, with, the, with the EU in relation to autos, in, in relation to vehicles, has really boosted the German market. And that's why today we see the German market hit a level last seen in, in June 2018. So that really, really tells you everything you need to know about, about the kind of how things are going over in Germany. We're comfortably above the psychologically important 13,000 mark. And to be managed to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 13,200. Um, if you do, on the other hand, though, do if you have if you happen to see uh, a move to the downside, we could find some support from 13,000, it's a big psychological number, but also this area here in around 12,900. Um, this so this zone of say 100 points, 13,000 down to 12,900 may act as support. And even if you got drop below that, this area here in around 12,800 might act as support. Now, when you're looking at you know charting, price is by far the most important indicator. The price tells you 90% of the you know, bench basically of what you need to know. But it's also just keep keeping an eye on on, um, on other indicators as well. So if you take a look. At the MACD histogram, the MACD, um, MACD, the MACD um, indicator, you can see that at the the underlying market is moving higher, clearly in an upward trend. But we actually have seen a fairly steady de decline in positive momentum. So the market's pushing higher, so that that's really what you, you should be focused on. But at the same time, you have to be aware that it's getting it's achieving higher highs on lower momentum. So that could be a sign that the market, the the, uh, the buyers, the bulls. Are kind of running out of running out of steam, so we could see a bit of a pullback. So that's why I was saying that you know keep an eye out for thirteen thousand or twelve thousand nine hundred. So we, we might see a bit of a pullback, but the fact that the market has hit the highest level in over a year is a is a real kind of takeaway message from this chart. So we we've, we've seen how the FTSE has been it's a, basically at a, at a one month high. We've seen it's it's a, it's a uh, the highest level in over a year. On the DAX, and if, it, and if you take a look at what's going on over in the US, well, it, it would look appear it would appear as if the US market could, the Dow Jones could could potentially open at a all time high. Uh, we we saw all time highs on the S&P 500 last week and the Nasdaq 500 on last week, not on the on the on the Dow Jones yet, but that could all change today. So equity markets, equity sentiment, equity market sentiment in the US is very strong. We could be looking at opening at or near an all time high. That gives you a very clear, clear indication of the sentiment over the US. Uh, we're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open around 27,430. If we do manage to kind of open, if we do manage to continue in the kind of wider upper trend, we could be looking at targeting 27,500, 27,600. If we do see any moves to the downside, support could be found from this zone here in around 27,200 or from the kind of psychological number itself, 27,000. Uh, and even if you drop below that, this this area here, the the, lay, the lows of, uh, of late October, in around twenty six thousand nine hundred and fifteen, might act as support. And essentially, while we hold above this blue line here, the fifty day moving average, which comes into play at twenty six thousand seven hundred seventy nine, while we hold above that, it's likely that we we are going to see uh, further moves to the upside. And it's only really if you have a size to break below that, because then we begin to think, okay, maybe we could be in for a bit of a deeper, um, deeper. Pull back, and we could be looking heading back to this red line here, which is the trading moving average, and that can display at 26,262. As I mentioned a second ago, uh, the S&P 500 racked up um, all-time highs last week. Um, if things continue the way, the way they are, if the US market, if the cash market gets, gets underway, we could be looking at seeing uh, fresh, even uh, even higher all-time highs. So we're, we're very much in an upward trend on the uh, on the S&P 500. Uh, we're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open at 3,080. There thereabouts. If you press on higher from here, I could be looking at targeting 3,090 or perhaps um, beyond that in the, in the medium term up towards 3,100. Uh, if you do see any kind of pullbacks, uh, we could see some fresh buyers end of the fold uh, as buying in the dip has been a popular strategy uh, in recent weeks and months. So if we do move to the downside, support can be found from this area here in around 3,055 down towards 3,035. So that's kind of zone of 20 points that can act as support. Uh, and, and even if you drop below that, this area here, this line in a, 
in around 3025 uh, that area might act as support also and then of course if, even if you drop below that it kind of we did see a lot of consolidation in around the psychologically important 3000 metric I'll take a look now at a couple of the uh, big currency pairs starting off with the euro versus the US dollar so you can see here from late September onwards or early October onwards we did see a fairly decent bounce back in the euro versus the US dollar and we're still very much in uh, that, up, that upward trend but we have the highs of late October and early November haven't really taken out the highs of early October just yet we're not too far away from it we could be on the cusp of it uh, and if we do press and higher from this area here we could be looking at targeting 112 which kind of coincides with this red line the 200 moving average um, and if we go beyond that we could be looking at targeting this zone here the early August high in at one spot 1249 uh, if you do see a better move to the downside support can be found from it from this yellow line here the water day moving average uh, we see that actually as resistance and um, in resistance in, in August and also we can see here that we saw some, some consolidation around this not too long ago so the area might act as support and that comes into play at one spot 1123 um, and it's only really if you can drop take off the recent lows the, the late August lows uh, sorry, late October lows apologies these this area here in around one spot 1075 if, so really if you break below that can then be kind of think okay maybe you might actually look ahead of the lower uh, should that be the case uh, support can be found from this blue line here the fifth moving average and that comes into play at one spot 1040 Take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. So we see saw a massive bounce back from early September, early September onwards in the British pound. Decent move to the upside through September and then really on the basically mid of October and the announcement that the British government and the EU reached a deal uh, and then the subsequent uh, approval in principle of that deal uh, has really um, Sent, sent the British pound higher against the, uh, the US dollar. In fact, we hit a level in, in late October, we had, we had a, a five month high. And even though we have pulled back a small bit and kind of looked look to move higher again, we're still very much in that upward trend. Um, and if we do manage to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the one spot 30 area. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the late August high, or sorry, apologies, the early May high, this area here, in at one spot 31.78. And if you do have um, any move to the downside, support can be found from this zone here in around 1 spot 28. And even if you go below that, it could come into play from this, this red line here, the trend of moving average in at 1 spot 20, is it, is it in, in at um, 1 spot 2710. I'll take a look now at some commodities, the gold market and also the, the pound, and also so the pound, the, uh, the oil market. So starting off with gold, uh, we can see that gold is still very much in a software trend. It, it achieved a six-month high in um, in early early September, and ever since then it's broadly been trading a bit to the downside, but it's more kind of range-bound than anything. Um, we, we, we we're comfortably we're just we're comfortably above the kind of psychologically important fifteen hundred um, dollar mark, but at the same time we can't really get above the kind of fifty and twenty area. We can't really it doesn't really go below the kind of 1480 14, area either so we're kind of stuck in that kind of 40 point range so if we do see a break above 1520 we could be like, like, like targeting the september high which comes to play in around uh, the, the early september high in around 14 uh 35 let's put the uh the chart on there the bar on there uh and at the downside if you do have a fairly size of break below 1500 we could be looking heading back down towards uh, the early August early October low in at uh, 1479 it's um it's not entirely surprising that we saw gold have a massive positive run for uh, for months and months and months and then have well a bit of a sideways move a bit of a kind of on an on an interesting kind of a bit of a holding pattern um, but keep in mind that it's it hasn't, despite the fact that I had a colossal rally um, from really kind of well 
starting all the way back in August, had a colossal rally and loads of ground was made. It's a, it's a bit of a surprise it hasn't actually given up more ground. So if anything, which actually talks about the resilience of the gold market, um, you, you, could, you know, you might, you might you know, think in that we could be heading back towards 1400 before the wire trend continues, but we're still ha very much hanging around 1500. So to be honest, I find the gold market a boring at the moment. But while we hold above 1500, the bias is still to the upside. So we could be looking at uh, retesting 1435 in the medium term. And it's only really if you have a, slight, a size of break below the early October low in around 1459, because then we begin to think, actually, you know what, we could be heading back down towards 1400 then. What I'm now going to do is take a look at the oil markets, starting off with uh, Brent crude. And then we should look to wrap things up. So we can see if we draw a line between the lows of early October and then, uh, and then the lows of, uh, of, 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 um, of kind of late-ish October, we get this trend line along here. And essentially, while we hold above that trend line, it's likely we could see you know further gains being made uh, in the in the oil market. And if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at target this zone here in around 63 dollars a barrel. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at target this red line here, which comes to play at 64 spot 78. Uh, and then if you get above that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 56, sorry 65 spot 79. Uh, on the flip side, if you do manage to have a very decent break to the downside. And we take out this trend line here, and we go below the kind of $60 per barrel. We could then be looking at targeting this zone here down around at 56 spot 71. That is Brent crude, and I'll take a look at WTI. A similar situation whereby since early October it has been pressing higher. Once again, if you draw a line between the lows of early October and the lows of mid October, we get this trend line here. And notice how the market's been comfortably above that. Uh, for the last few weeks, but we're still look, haven't really actually taken out the truly moving average. This red line here, which comes to play at 57, is about 18. So that's that. That could be potentially the next area for um, for resistance for a move to the upside. I think I'll be on that. We could then be looking toward this area here in around 58 dollars a barrel. On the flip side, if you do have a, move, a pretty decent uh, move lower, and we take out the recent lows here, we could be looking head back down toward this trend line. Which should come into play in around $53 a barrel, and the move below that could take us then back down towards this area here, down around the kind of early, early, well, the, the mid October low in around 51 spot 41, and the move below that could take us back down towards the low seed at the beginning of the month, just north of $51 per barrel. Uh, well, thank you for tuning in, and that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.